Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. And today we're going to be talking about the fundamentals to building an effective weapon combination in Tower of Fantasy. Let's go ahead and dig in. So a lot of people wonder what weapons work well together, what weapons have synergy together. And I think instead of just giving you the formations, I think it's important that we teach everybody kind of why these formations exist and what the importance is behind them. And so we're going to start off by talking about the weapon resonance effect, because this is the foundation of every single formation in the game. And you're going to be able to create your own formation to be effective in different ways, as long as you are a master of this. So let's go ahead and go through them one by one, because what many people kind of take for granted is the team buff that these effects give, and they can be very substantial. Uh, starting with attack, for example, if you have two attack based weapons equipped, you're going to get a 10% final damage bonus. But when you are in group play, that 10% damage bonus is all of a sudden going to become 40%, which is extremely substantial. If you're running into joint ops right now and you're wanting to deal a lot of damage, this is the way you need to go. Now, similarly, the fortitude buff is how you create a tank. A tank is not created by just a single character in the game. It's created by setting two tank characters. In this situation right now, that would be Meryl and it would be Huma, right? And by setting these two tank characters, you're going to get an increased damage reduction of 25%, a shatter bonus of plus 60%, and aggro plus 800%. And then in team play, that damage reduction is going to be an additional 20%. So you're going to have 45% damage reduction. And this is where kind of things can get interesting and things can get a little uh, creative, right? Because you have these two tank slots, right? And right now, if you're wanting to be competitive and you're wanting to tank, it's going to have to be Meryl and Huma. That's just, those are the only SSR tanks that we have, right? So what do you put in that third slot? And for most people from everything that I've seen, that third slot is almost always a shatter based character. So if you're wanting to run a tank build right now for Fortitude, you might consider running Meryl, which is already a very powerful shatter character. Uh, you'll run Huma, and then you could put in King just for that additional shatter bonus and potentially become a very powerful shatter tank, right? Uh, similarly with healing, uh, having two healers in your party right now, that would be like Coco Ritter and Nemesis, but Nemesis is a little bit of a different story here, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. Uh, but Benediction requires two healers in the party. Uh, so initially it gives 100% heal up and then party wide, when you do party wide content, it gives plus 100% on top of that. So very easy to kind of spec yourself and the formations kind of create themselves because there's not a ton of SSR units right now. Now the balance formation, which is one tank, one DPS, one healer, I'm not the biggest fan of because it kind of gives you damage reduction, it gives you healing effect, and then it also gives you shatter effect, and then it also gives you more damage reduction and more final damage. I just I like the I like the emphasis on the others, not so much the balance. You may want to go balance if you're like a giga whale. Uh, there are some builds that do come out later in the future when we have really strong power creeped weapons that are released that do require the balance build. But for right now, you're going to want to focus on kind of the other three. Now, what's special about Nemesis and how would I build the different teams that I'm going to build? So let's talk about Nemesis real quick because Nemesis brings another point of conversation to the table. And this is going to be specifically around the ability Volt Resonance. Now, you may have heard people say you need to equip right you need to equip three weapons of the same element and that's not necessarily true um it may be good if you do have the effect of volt resonance but volt resonance is a type of re resonance that's essentially a weapon passive it's not necessarily going to show up on the main equipment screen the only character with volt resonance or with resonance or elemental resonance on the global side right now is going to be nemesis and you can trigger it by just having two lightning based equipments equipped so if you are wanting to run maybe a full support build you could potentially run 
Nemesis. You could run Coco Ritter as an additional healer, right? Uh, and then you could run something like Crow or Samir and add in a mixture of damage. Now, you wouldn't have very good Shatter in that situation, but maybe that's not what you're looking for. Even though many guides that talk about healers talk about healers running a third Shatter, very similar to tanks, just so that you can get past those Shatter walls or those shield barriers uh, for specific boss fights later on in the game. So what does Volt Resonance do? Uh, it increases Volt's attack by 15% and Volt Resistance by 25%. Uh, activate by equipping two or more Volt weapons. Uh, and this set effect does not work with others. So if you do have a specific elemental build that you're wanting to build, this could be very powerful. This might kind of lend the type of formation that you want to build this way. Uh, so lots of things to consider here when you are building. And that's why when you're looking at building your weapon sets, the first thing you want to look at is kind of like what weapon resonance you want. And then if you do want to build around someone special like Nemesis, that's going to change things just a little bit, right? Because you want to get Volt Resonance. And then in Nemesis's case, you're probably going to want to get either the support build or some other type of build in order to make this work. Uh, and you can get creative. Uh, there is no, you know, best build, I doubt. Um, I think, you know, people will say there's best builds and I really don't think there is. Uh, most people are not gonna be playing at the level um, of Giga Whales that are gonna have everything unlocked anyway. Uh, one of the other things I would look at here, uh, just as we are going into the future as well, and you are looking at planning your different builds, is the uh, star rankings of the weapons themselves. So for example, I'm gonna talk about Zero here for a second. Uh, when I pulled Zero, everybody was talking about how great Zero was, and I did not like Zero. Uh, Zero just was not working with my formation at all. And part of the reason for that is Zero as a healer doesn't really get his healing ability until you get him to awaken one. He doesn't get his skill CD ability until you get him to awaken three. He doesn't get his damage buff until you get him to awaken five. So there is kind of a tier of power level of characters, depending on what awakening level they are. And a couple of them are going to carry over a little bit longer, such as Subasa and Crow. Uh, so, you know, they're gonna take a while to really get ramped up and then they're gonna be really powerful. Or you're gonna have some where Samir is really powerful, really good at lower tiers, right? You're not going to need to get Samir six star in order for Samir to be incredible. So all of this, I would definitely recommend you check out. Um, a lot of these resources can be found on the Tower of Fantasy Index. This guide specifically is from the Ada Cafe from Maho Lualai. Lula Lila Lula <laughs> and Cytus. So make sure you go and check this out. I will provide uh, a link to these down in the description down below. And hopefully this helps you guys put together how you are going to build your teams because I think we quite easily forget about weapon resonance and how powerful an effect that can play. We get kind of caught up and like, oh yeah, I got this SSR and I want to use this. Or, you know, people say this SSR is really good. How do I know which SSR is going to be better? You really kind of have to get in there, kind of look at the details figure out what you want. Uh, right now, a great example is I have Meryl, I have King, I have Shiro, and I have Zero. And I could easily go for Samir and go for a DPS build. Or since I have King and Meryl, I could also go for a tank build by getting Kuma right now. Now, granted, I know that Mark is coming in the future and Mark is supposed to be a very powerful tank character. And so I may not do that, but it is something where, you know, I'm thinking about my SSR ticket that I'm going to be getting here soon. And I'm thinking, which one should I be getting? So thank you so much for watching, everybody. Again, I hope this was helpful. Please share this out to people. I'm a new Tower of Fantasy content creator, uh, and I'm only going to get bigger by you guys commenting, liking, subscribing, uh, and sharing this out to people. So thanks so much, everybody. And I will catch you guys next time.